So I will waiting for anyone to join. Maybe I started too late. Let me check. Okay, so maybe I will start because we didn't promote this uh, very first community meeting on time. So there isn't too much guys participating us, but I will start because we will archive the meeting anyway. So everyone can see this recording. Okay, so I will start a solo meeting. So, Let's start. Hello, everyone. For those maybe not join now, but in the future, I'm super exciting to I'm super excited to share with you that we will launch our community meeting for Network Graph community community. And uh, the agenda today are for all of them. So uh, apart from the first one, which is the introduction of the way of working of the community meeting, the rest are actually the routine uh, process of a meeting that you will see how it looks like actually later. So um, first is the way of working of the uh, community meeting. So as we can see that the meeting now was designed as uh, bi-weekly. So this is like, this is the week four uh, today. And uh, next two weeks, uh, we will have another meeting. So before, um, before uh, next meeting, everyone can prepare and propose their topics and put it in our agenda, in, our, in, the, in the etherpad that uh, the Etherpad, uh, you may already know that this is the wiki, our homepage of the meeting. And you can click here to uh, have this Etherpad. So for example, before this very first meeting, I have put my topics here with my uh, uh, approximately uh, time and, and my name. And um, in, in, in a typical case, I will suggest you to uh, also ping us in a Slack. Uh, we, will ha we have a channel named the Nebula uh, me uh, Community Meeting uh, channel in, in Slack. So you can ping me and or anyone else, or you can uh, start questioning on how you would like to make uh, this discussion topics there. And for other uh, async uh, communications, you can still do that in Slack, GitHub, forum, etc. So when it comes to um, actual meeting, we will first introduce the new um, members. I will do that later, so maybe only myself, <laughs> which is a sad story, but not that sad. We're, we're only the very beginning. Um, we will have some uh, heartbeats um, updates of the project. For example, some interesting PRs issues, some interesting threads in the forum or offline discussion that we consider to be um, meaningful to be shared. And yeah, this is the ad hoc topics part that everyone can prepare and propose it here. You can give your proposal uh, introduced, give your idea, discussed, share a story, either it's related to Nebula Graph or not, if you like, or you bring something, you made it. I made this and I want to share it with you. It's more than welcome to be demonstrated here. And the last part 
will be the open floors. If anyone want to have a sync discussion, some questions, or even you want to involve certain parts uh, or contributors of the community, you can propose it and let us know if you would like someone to be involved, we can try that. And after uh, the meeting, everything will be archived and published uh, on internet and you can find them in archived in YouTube and inter, uh, Etherpad. So anyone else in the future can learn from that, hopefully. So basically, uh, this is the way of working of the community meeting. Okay, I see. Let me see if anyone joins. Okay. Um, so we start with the routine. So this is our very first, only me. So this is we. I'm the developer advocate in VESoft, which is the team behind the Nebula Graph. And I love open source. I like coding and I love graph text. I like to collaborate and help you out there in the community. Just ping me from the Twitter, Slack or forum. So that's, that's all the members join this meeting today, I think. Okay. Um, so we move to the next section the project heartbeats. So the first part I want to share um, is about a next release that actually um, like yesterday or today before yesterday, we already have a session on the preview of this release, which is 3.0, which is uh, the third major release of Nebula Graph. And I have given, uh, like 30 minutes uh, talk in, in this, uh, in this uh, YouTube, it's a live streaming uh, talk. And this is a slide. And you can, uh, I will quickly go through the contents of, of the um, new release, uh, but you can, you can check more details uh, in the video. Uh, we, uh, the main uh, features introduced are uh, some more support, um, capability on the open cipher. Um, the very first one is uh, we support the multi-pattern mesh. So it's, uh, uh, it will uh, significantly improve the expression ability of the match pattern. And also we support a parameter that you can uh, let the service ad help you to validate your uh, query. You can send the parameters and the template together to a server side. And this is the second one is the uh, bird's eye view of data. That is you can uh, look up or match data without you uh, necessarily needing the, the index. The only uh, requirements here is you put a limit of the clause. So that will sample partial data of, the, of your query without, uh, needed of, uh, without needing the index, which is quite convenient. Another one is we support the bare vertex, which is the vertex without any text. So you can create a uh, bare uh, vertex without any text, or you can detach all the text from a vertex and it, will, it won't be uh, deleted anymore. So this is a change uh, comparing to the version two. And we finally will release the backup and restore in this cycle. So, and it's actually redesigned. We decoupled SSH, but, and we keep the user, the API unchanged, but it's more uh, friendly for the cloud native case. For enhancements, we uh, we, we revisited and uh, refined our metrics, and we introduced a lot more metrics, like 15 more. And we have the support of the Kiwi separation, which is the uh, outcome of the Nebula hackathon in last year. Uh, we refined and refactored the, the index uh, execution plan and the raft. Uh, we introduced the TIL support for the Elasticsearch client and we implemented the log rot rotation from the server side. So you don't have to use your 
the external uh, utility to do that anymore. And that's the first part on the preview of the next release, which will probably happen in February. Um, so this part that I will do it in every meeting in the future are some uh, highlights of some uh, interesting PRs. So I will go through quite very quickly. But you, if you are interested in uh, them, you can discuss with us or check the PRs. Uh, the first one is with the help of the um, Open Cipher uh, improvements, the new features. Um, we bring a lot of uh, LDBC cases in our unit tests. So um, this is the uh, PR that you can refer a lot of uh, multi-pattern uh, expressions in, in, in the code, in the test code. And K6, uh, if you don't know that K6 is a tooling to um, do the performance uh, stress test. And the Nebula Graph community has a K6 plugin to uh, stress, to put pressures, traffic on Nebula Graph. And uh, recently there is a PR to make it supporting the V V1. So this tool was introduced in the V2 uh, time period. Now it supported the legacy V1 uh, as well. And uh, the, this is the recently merged uh, PR that show hosts now can uh, report details uh, version. Previously, you have to do show host meta, show host graph, because uh, in, in history, we used to separate different parts in different repos. So the version of the, the GitHub, the Git hash information PR is um, max expression depth. So this is a new um, configuration. Previously, we hard code it in a value like 501 and, and, and 12. Uh, now it's configurable. So the expression depth actually means when, when you are uh, parsing your uh, expression, every um, part will be considered one less, one, as one layer. So depth means like one plus two refers to uh, depths in two. So that's a more uh, smaller, um, Gregor's, um, it's a smaller uh, piece uh, in the depths uh, rather than the jumps or pipelines. You can uh, look, uh, check up to details in SPR. And next one is um, the, uh, this PR that one of our uh, community contributor uh, introduced uh, a limit number of sessions per client that is um, with this work, you can optionally um, limit uh, session and uh, numbers per uh, IP address of the client side. Another one is uh, also uh, not merged uh, a PR. Uh, it's, it's a PR in the Nebula Exchange. So for your information, Nebula Exchange is a Spark application, application that enables multiple data sources uh, to be imported to a Nebula graph, um, like MySQL, like Hive, uh, new 4 j etc. Um, so this PR uh, will introduce the app, uh, capability to import data from the Postgres uh, database, and it's still being reviewed. So that's all from the PR in last two weeks. Um, yep. And next part, I will share some interesting threads or discussions among the community. So there will be three of them. The first one is uh, someone, actually it's not the first one that uh, someone was uh, questioning that how we can uh, import data from dgraph. So actually uh, after the box, uh, Nebula Exchange uh, doesn't support the source yet, but uh, you, can, you actually can do that in several different uh, ways. One of them uh, proposed by our uh, maintainer of Nebula Exchange is that, but you, for details, you can check on this issue. 
uh, you can use Nebula Spark connector and uh, Degrowth Spark connector. So we uh, running on Spark, you can leverage the two connectors and uh, to parsing the, so uh, the, the source of truth from Degrowth and uh, uh, persistent, uh, persisting or writing it to Nebula Graph. That won't be quite uh, complicated, but similar way you can use any other um, programming languages that we already have a client that's comfortable to you, um, like Nebula Python, together with the Python clients of the DGraph. It's a similar case, but maybe Spark is helping on leveraging multiple uh, computation resources. So, but you can never leverage any, any clients in theory. Another option is that uh, uh, Jie, who is our uh, community contributor, maintainer of Nebula Graph Core, uh, introduced uh, this, this project, which is the RDF uh, converter. Uh, this is the repo here. With that, you can, uh, Firstly, you can export your data from DGraph as the RTF format, and then you can use this converter to make it into a CSV files, which is compatible to Nebula importer. Nebula importer is a Go binary um, file to enable CSV file to be imported to Nebula Graph. So that's also an option. So another uh, topics, a, uh, in our forum, but in, it's in, in Chinese, but you can um, get some information there because the sample codes are in Python. Uh, someone is uh, uh, questioning that uh, Nebula uh, Python seems quite slow and uh, our um, Nebula, uh, one of our uh, maintainers in Nebula Graph shared this um, experiments that to demonstrate how or why it's slow and uh, how we should solve them in certain cases. Uh, so in short, um, there could be two reasons mainly. One is uh, one case is that uh, your traffic is your case is scenario is uh, CPU bound. That is, uh, the Python code is busy doing the unserialization work. So in that case. Uh, in that case, normally you have a, a bunch of data being returned from the server side, and uh, Python was ba ba uh, you know Python was wasn't quite uh, that's um, good at doing this CPU bound uh, tasks. So in this case, uh, your way out if you uh, stick to Python, uh, your way out will be leveraging the multi process to you know then you will not be limited to the GIL um, with this case, right? Another case that your query is actually uh, quite slow. You don't, uh, the Python code is not busy um, handling the data unserialization case. Like you query a lot of data and give a pipeline count uh, stars. So that will, I, uh, in that case, uh, uh, it's actually IO bound because your client is just waiting for the server to return uh, a, a long run uh, query. So in that case, the multi-thread will help you, but this is a typical uh, IO bound case, which is quite typical um, experience and uh, quite uh, useful for the newcomers, I think. So the next topic uh, that I want to bring is um, the support um, of the C group V1. Um, sorry, this is typo. Uh, crash on uh, C group V2, actually. I'm sorry. And the background here is that uh, we we, allow, we introduced a mechanism to uh, check the utilization of the memory and that we assumed every um, host OS uh, comes with a C group V1. 
Um, but actually, in, in, in some modern uh, environments, uh, it comes with the secret V2, and that will crash the um, graph D. Um, so this is the related issue. Actually, this is not impacting most of the production uh, environments as we observe. But uh, unfortunately, uh, last month, uh, the Docker desktop have uh, three point, uh, four, uh, 4 3.0 that uh, replaced their, uh, you know, uh, the Docker desktop is a tool uh, provided by Docker. And they actually put a VM on your uh, Windows or uh, Mac OS. So that um, VM was replaced with a newer uh, version uh, of the operating system, introduced the secret V2 since 4.3.0. Um, so if you are running Nebula Graph on your um, laptop's Docker desktop, uh, your graph, uh, your graph D will crash. So in that case, uh, you can roll back to the last version, which is the 4.2.0, that uh, Docker desktop that will help you to solve that issue. And uh, but if you are running uh, Nebula in container uh, environments and your, uh, for example, your uh, Kubernetes node is quite new, uh, please just uh, wait a couple of days that we will have a, a new uh, release of 2.6 uh, in near future. And that will uh, bring this uh, bug fix uh, cherry picked. So uh, that won't take you long. And that's all parts of the project updates. And I believe maybe, yeah, I think we are reaching Mm, we're running out of topics now. Let me see if anyone still joins. Okay, so before we um, call end of this meeting, please be um, noted that we are bi-weekly meeting and our next time will be here in February. And this is our uh, ways to join the meeting our Zoom, uh, Google Calendar. Uh, be sure to check the Etherpads on if any uh, topics are interested to you. And uh, be sure to join our um, Slack channel. Uh, we have a community meeting channel that you can talk things around the community meeting here. And I was there anytime. So maybe we can call this end. Okay. Thank you. See you in two weeks. Bye-bye.